how did you get involved into your study abroad program? Take us, take us back to the beginning. Okay. Um, so before I, well, before I ever got to college, I always knew that I wanted to study abroad. So after my sophomore year, I started looking into possible options. So I went through the Drexel online, uh, I think the website's like Go Abroad. It's like the Drexel website for studying abroad. So I went through that and I kind of narrowed down my options. I looked first by country, then by time period of the program. So I narrowed it down to two different programs. Both were in France. One was a dual, a dual country program. The other one was a program just in France. So I narrowed it down to that one. And I applied. Um, and through when I applied, I had to write an essay. I had to meet certain requirements. Um, grade-wise, academically, and I just had to be selected through from the program, and I was. So that's how Great. I chose my specific program. So where did you do your study abroad? Where did you end up? I went to Montpellier, France. It's when I talk about it, it's, I say it's diagonal from Paris. So if Paris is on the upper left-hand corner of France, Montpellier is on the bottom right-hand corner of France. cannot do a travel abroad program. How did you make it work? A lot of planning, a lot of planning. Um, I knew that I couldn't travel during my season, which is during the school year. So I figured out that I could travel abroad if I did it during the summertime. So again, when I narrowed down my programs, I narrowed it down to a program where I could do it during the summertime. So for this specific program, it was perfect because it was for five weeks in the summertime. Um, and while I was there for five weeks, I was responsible for training and making sure I still kept in shape for lacrosse, but I had that window of opportunity because I could travel during the off season. So, okay. so in staying in shape for lacrosse, how did you make that work abroad? I actually made a friend. So uh -huh. a girl in my program, we actually would wake up in the morning before a class. So we woke up, I'm going to say six o'clock in the morning, Ooh. pretty early. So we would run to the track. They actually had a track over there, which made it a thousand times easier. Um, we would run to the track and then we'd actually do our own workouts there. Um, and that actually helped out a lot because I had a friend like, and I had a buddy system that we held each other accountable for. Um, so yeah, training was, training in France was fun. Did anybody <laughs> think that you were weird because you were sprinting on a, People, on a track? When I first started, everyone was kind of like, what's going on? <laughs> like, why is she doing this? Um, why are you doing this basically <laughs> and because over there like their colleges don't necessarily have the same a athletic programs that we have mm -hmm. so when they play sports they kind of play it for fun or if they're playing they're playing soccer for fun and not necessarily at this level so a lot of people didn't understand why I was training mm -hmm. and like why I had to train but I mean everyone understood and they kind of said like oh okay like it's different over there so yeah. we totally get it so I mean and it works you came yeah. back and it worked out yeah, yeah. It worked out yeah um, why don't you take us through a typical day um, during your time there? So before, after you woke up at six, yeah. I went to the track to work out, then what? Okay, I would wake up after taking a little nap, wake <laughs> up and we would always have a brunch as a program. So the program was actually, the program was actually a host program. So the program was through the University of New Orleans and Drexel had host students go. So there were six Drexel students and there were about 35, 40 students from New Orleans. So we all met over there and as a program, we all had breakfast together. We had baguettes for breakfast, we had coffee, and we had some fruits, like some small peaches, some small pears, so something pretty light before class. Um, after breakfast, we'd all break, we'd all actually help clean up. And then we would walk to class and we were lucky because our housing was a five minute walk from our university. So we would all walk to class together. Um, we'd have class from, I'm gonna say eight until two, I'm sorry, 12. And then we'd have lunch. Lunch was pretty, lunch was, it was similar to here, like cafeteria style. We had lines that we would walk through, it was like a cafeteria. So we had lines that you grab your, your salad dish, your platter, your main course, and you grabbed your dessert. And it was funny because everyone spoke French, which I'm sure you can imagine. <laughs> so everyone spoke French, so we all had to like order our specific meals in French, which is mm. pretty cool. Um, and we'd have lunch, and then actually the Drexel students had a film class that we signed up for. 
So after lunch, we'd go back to film class, and we actually watched several movies. We watched Amelie, um, Au Revoir, Les Enfants. Great. <laughs> Sound like classics? Yeah, yeah. Pretty, like, yeah. We watched about four or five movies throughout the course of our time over there. Um, so we would watch movies and then we'd kind of reflect on the movies as a class. We'd write papers on the uh, movies oh, and our cool. different perceptions of the movies. Um, and we talked a lot about the different film directors and like what they conveyed in different parts of the movie. Cool. Um, and after class ended, we would go to the beach which was nice because there was a bus that ran right from our university to the beach which was oh, really nice fun. so we'd go to the beach and kind of just hang out and eat a lot sleep so great yeah so take me back to lunch what was your favorite meal there that you had only at, at your host hmm. for lunch at school yes mm. I think it was the sausage we had sausage and lentils and I'm not a big lentil person but these are really good, <laughs> so I really like them. Like we had them the very first day, and then we had them again like twice, and I was really excited for that. <laughs> so um, great. Yeah, sausage and lentils, and they had cheese for every platter, so loved that. Okay. Yeah. How you mentioned your film class? How were your classes and workload while you were studying abroad? So it was how many classes were you in total? I had a total of three classes. Um, one all of them of, was film. One of them was film, one of them was history, and the other one was a culture and civilization class. Mm. So when we got there, our teachers, they were very mindful that we were studying abroad. So they kind of made it a point to not give us too much coursework, but like they also made it <laughs> very clear that they expected us to like do our work mm -hmm. and to participate in class, which we all did, of course. Um, so we had, typically we would have papers or in-class assignments and we'd study together after, after class. Um, before class, sometimes at lunch. Um, so we would have mainly papers and mainly just written assignments. And along with the film class, we had our um, Great. presentations about the film. Have you yeah. caught up on those films since coming back at all? I haven't, actually, okay. and I really, really want to. All right. Next one, Nathan. We'll check him. Yeah. <laughs> um, what other countries were you able to visit? Countries, major cities, were you able to visit because you were already over there studying? Yeah, so um, once you're over there, it's so much easier to go anywhere else over there so Montpellier was home base so we took a program trip to Paris for the weekend um, and a group of my friends we actually took the weekends to travel because we didn't have class on the weekends so we traveled to Monaco um, Saint Guillaume le Desert which is the second most beautiful village in France which is oh. amazing we went to the first most beautiful village which was Ez. Um we went to Marseille for the weekend we went to uh, else um, and then I also was able to go to Austria Vienna Austria for a week because I have a relative that lives over there oh, so nice. yeah I was there for a week um, I went to Milan Italy huh the name yeah <laughs> <laughs> Milan I went to, Milan. yeah Perfect. I went to Milan um, I was in Milan for eight hours I want to say oh. like I planned it because I had a layover in Milan oh, for cool. like eight hours so I kind of used that to bus downtown and you know kind of explore around um, Great. Yeah. Any other countries you got to see? Um, I think I three countries. Yeah. Cool. Um, which one was your favorite out of there? France. Was, oh, okay. Yeah, France was my favorite. I think Vienna was my second most favorite because my cousin lives there, so it was easier to kind of navigate. Yeah. Um, I liked being in Milan, but I don't speak any Italian. Yeah. So that was kind of hard. You um, can't get used to it in eight hours. Yeah, not in eight hours. Yeah. I need more time. So maybe if I speak there longer, then. Got it. A lot better. So, of the overall experience, how long were you um, abroad? I was abroad for a total of six weeks. Six weeks. I okay. was in France for five weeks, and then I was in Vienna for one, one week, week, and then Milan kind of happened on the weekends. Cool. So, um, out of the whole experience, what would you say your favorite part was? Mm. I think my favorite part was actually when I would take time to travel alone. Mm. Um, I feel like it's easy to get caught up in the touristy destinations of like the of where you're at. But I yeah. think my favorite part was that I would leave, like, I would kind of leave the pack and go around and explore myself, and 
that helped me learn the language a lot better because in France, like when I would go out and talk to people, that's how I learned the language the most. Mm. And like that's how you're supposed to learn it kind so of. So you're pretty so, fluent in it now. Wouldn't say fluent. Okay. I'm, I, I definitely improved. Yeah, I definitely improved. For sure. <laughs> so <laughs> what would you say to somebody who's considering doing the program, whether they're a student athlete or not? Do it. Without a doubt, do it. Because it was, without a doubt, the best summer of my entire life. It was amazing. You learn so much about yourself. You learn so much about the world. You learn so much about what you want to do and like what you're good at and kind of like and you're forced to kind of be reckoned with who you are when you're alone in a mm -hmm. foreign place which is a different experience because here you meet you like you kind of like know everything you kind of know the ropes but like when you're forced to navigate alone mm -hmm. it's in a strange place like that's where like you really come to the surface which i think is such a rewarding experience which i would recommend for anyone and everyone cool